started. Standing shape. First, just make it something nice and accessible and comfy. So beginning to settle into the idea of connection or foundation at the soles of our feet. So maybe creating a little movement, bringing weight into some parts of the feet and then others maybe spreading out the bottoms of the feet or spreading out the toes, allowing yourself to really start to feel grounded in that foundation. And then coming to stillness in the feet and ankles, take a little bend and stretch into the knees. And then allow yourself to find that space where you feel really long in the knees, long in the backs of the legs, but without your knees being locked. Creating a little bit of subtle movement in your pelvis. Maybe you get a little more movement at your knees and feet as you do that. And then trying to find a neutral pelvis. So we're not spilling water out of the front, not spilling water out of the back. Right in center, center of the pelvis lands right over the space between the center of our feet. And then allow your shoulders to roll back and down just a little, palms to rest gently down toward the sides of your thighs. Or if you like, palms gently open toward the front of your space. Imagine creating just a little additional length to the back of your neck, bringing the chin ever so slightly in and up. Bringing your gaze down to the floor in front of you, or if you like, fully closing the eyes. And as you, as you do that, as you start to let go of external stimuli, take a moment to check in with the body here. Did any of those little micro movements or adjustments create any discomfort or dis-ease? Or can you find this comfortable mountain pose while also feeling slightly long, slightly engaged? Make any other just little organic adjustments here that feel right. Settling into stillness, letting awareness come to your breath. And notice when I made that invitation, did your mind's eye travel somewhere in particular to a part of the body maybe? Or maybe there was some other idea or image that came up for you. Taking a moment here to observe the breath just as it is, just as you're arriving to your mat, arriving to your practice. Full awareness, just observing the sense of air coming and air going. Allow awareness to come to the low belly, if it's not there already. And take a moment to notice the movement that comes with each breath cycle at the low belly. And then beginning to lengthen and deepen your breath and imagine creating a little more space or expansion in the belly as you breathe. So those really deep, Full, expansive inhales, filling the lungs. Diaphragm draws down, belly expands out. Complete, slow, intentional exhales, belly gently draws in. As you deepen, lengthen the breath here, invitation to try and make that exhale just slightly longer than your inhale. go of breath control, allowing the body to settle back to an easy but still full breath. 
Blink the eyes, fully open. And then we'll bring the feet just slightly wider than they are. Toes turned out ever so slightly. Take a little bit more of a bend into the knees. Sweep both arms up overhead. We'll interlace the fingers overhead. Notice which thumb is on top. Flip those palms to point away from the crown of the head. Reach long through the spine, long through the crown, long through the arms, pressing straight up towards your ceiling. Imagine you're stretching all the way from the soles of your feet up through the torso, into the neck, into the arms. Take a big inhale here, pressing long. And then with an exhale, take a side bend to the right. Imagine really rooting down through that left foot, stretching all the way up through that lateral line, side body, into the armpit, up into the wrist. Wait for the bottom of an exhale here. We'll use the inhale, lift back through center, press those hands high. Use your exhale, come to the second side. That outer edge of the right foot stays firmly connected as you lengthen from the edge of that foot up through the outer leg, side body, arm, maybe hand and fingers. Wait for the bottom of an exhale here. Inhale, lift center. Exhale, release your fingers. Sweep the hands around to the low back. Interlace the fingers at the low back. We're gonna take those interlaced fingers directly down toward the earth behind our heels. Opening the heart, opening the throat a little. Stretching fronts of the shoulders. And relaxing the arms, unlacing the fingers, let the hands dangle beside your hips for a moment. Just give those arms a little shake. And then we'll sweep the arms overhead again, interlace the fingers with your opposite thumb in front. Flip those palms, reach away from the crown of the head, pressing long. Take one more big inhale here, reach. Exhale, side bend left. Use your next in-breath, lift center, your out-breath, opposite side. And again, using an inhale, lifting center, use an exhale, release those fingers, sweep them around to the low back, interlace. If you wanna try, maybe opposite thumb on top with hands behind you. This time, either reaching those hands directly down toward the space behind the heels like we did before, or if you like, take a few breaths, each breath cycle lifting your arms a little higher from your spine. And starting to slide those hands back in toward the tailbone. Unlace, arms dangle, give them a shake. Root down through your right foot. We're gonna lift the left foot, slide it behind the right. It's gonna come to the floor outside the right foot. We're gonna leave about four or six inches between our feet. So rather than glued together, <laughs> might fall over this morning, glued together like they sometimes are when we do an asymmetrical forward fold. We're gonna have a little space between those feet. We'll again bring the hands up overhead. This time we're gonna take the right fingertips around the left wrist. We're gonna inhale long and then exhale side bend right again, letting a little more weight rest into your right foot. Maybe the inner edge of your left foot lifts as you draw that left arm across center line over to the opposite side. And starting to lift the hands, release that wrist, let the hands come down, rest wherever's comfortable for a moment. Slide that left foot behind back to its starting position. Plant that foot down. Don't fall over as you <laughs> lift your right foot. Slide it behind, leaving a little space. 
between the feet, bring those hands overhead, left fingertips, find right wrist, create some length and side stretch. Starting to lift the hands, lift the spine, release hands, rest wherever's comfortable for a moment. Bring that right foot back around to your starting position. Sweep those hands up overhead again. This time we're gonna bring the palms together at heart center. Palms together, drawing down. Now interlace the fingers in front of the sternum. Press the palms away, round the spine, glance down through your arms. Starting to lift back up to neutral, draw the hands down toward the front of the pelvis. Unlace those fingers, let the arms dangle beside the hips again. Give the arms a nice little shake. And then take a nice bend into the knees, slide the hands around to the fronts of the thighs. Leading from the crown of the head, slow melt over to a forward fold. So neck rolls down, mid spine rolls down. Eventually lumbar spine rolls down and we release dangling down over the legs. Nice juicy bend in the knees, softness in the spine. And then reaching or walking, or if you have one with you, take a block with you. Hands over toward the outside edge of the right foot. Take a moment stretching that direction. Walking, sliding, reaching hands back through center. Second side. Walking, sliding, reaching back through center. Again, if you have a block, you can keep the block with you as we find a twist. So we'll take left palm or fingertips to the earth just in front of our gaze or to our block just in front of our gaze. Deeply bend the left knee, twist the heart open to the right. Slide the right hand to the hip, gazing up past that shoulder if you like. Invite those fingertips all the way up, gazing past the fingers. Take a full inhale, wait for your exhale, move through forward fold, switching the places of your hands, inhale opposite side, deeply bending that right knee, left hand to hip or overhead. Take another full inhale, exhale, forward fold, arms dangling, inhale, slow roll or ragdoll your way back up to standing. And then when you get there, bring the hands back around behind the sacrum again, we'll interlace the fingers and then either drawing those hands down toward the earth or lifting the arms away from the spine. Hmm. And then we're gonna keep the arms as they are and come to half forward fold. So keeping those arms gently reaching down, maybe they're lifting up away from your spine. Keep a baby bend in the knees, 
hinge from the hips, half fold. So we imagine we create an upside down L shape with the body crown reaching directly away from tail. And then when you get there, see if you could lengthen the back of the knees a little bit more without locking them. Could you open your sits bones up and back toward the space behind you? Could you, with spine long and neutral, float your heart a little closer to your mat? And starting to relax arms back in toward the spine. Unlace those fingers. Sweep the arms around, fingertips reaching toward the floor. Release the knees, release the spine. Full forward fold. Take a little side to side movement, rocking more weight into one foot and then the other, or figurating the hips or dangling arms or neck. And then again, take a nice slow roll, ragdoll all the way up. And find your nice long mountain, top of your mat, rooted down through the soles of the feet, long through the crown of the head, long in the back of the neck. Let those palms open, open, open out toward the sides as far as they'll go without causing any discomfort in the shoulder. So maybe palms open all the way out to face the sides of your space. Take a full exhale here. Inhale, sweep those hands up overhead. Take a little back bend, gazing up through your hands. Rotate those palms out at the top. Exhale, bring them down to the outer parts of the thighs, crown of the head pointing directly toward your ceiling. Rotate out at the top and lift. Rotate out and lower. One more time, rotate out, lift. Rotate out lower this time, we'll bring the hands to the hips. Hands to the hips, shoulders nice and soft. Ground down through your left foot, lift the right heel. We'll slide the right foot back for warrior one. So it comes about halfway back our mat. As we connect, we bring the heel in, toes pointed toward front right corner of the mat. Deeply bend that left knee, so your knee's right over your ankle. And then see if you can slightly draw the right hip forward, left thigh back, draw your tailbone down toward your floor so we're square and neutral in the pelvis. Check in with that right calf and see if you found a little bit of a stretch. If you didn't and you can keep your pelvis square and neutral, bring your left foot a little closer to the top of your mat. Bring that knee over the ankle and again checking in, trying to stay square, neutral, but legs are far enough apart. I've got a little bit of a subtle stretch in that right calf. We'll invite the arms up overhead, palms facing one another. And then keeping the legs as they are, take a little back bend, draw your elbows out and down. Find cactus arms or goalpost arms. Lift the sternum, open the throat, forearms press toward the space behind you. Pause, take a breath. Could you create a little more stretch through the fronts of the shoulders? And then lifting back to neutral, send those hands overhead for a moment. Keep the right fingertips reaching, float your left fingertips down outside your left hip. Reach those right fingertips long and then take a little bit of a side bend to the left as left fingertips reach down towards your floor. Lifting back to neutral, sweep the left hand up to meet the right. Rotate the palms out to face the sides of your space. Float the hands down to the hips. Take a big lean forward, deeper bend in your left knee. Lift your right heel, find tippy toes. Slide that foot all the way forward to meet the left. And in standing, just pause for a moment, use your hips. Use your hands to guide your hips in a few circles, one direction. And switch directions. Finding stillness 
and second side. Find that foundation in right foot. We'll slide, or maybe this side you try a lift and float back of the left foot. Connect that heel, about a 45 degree angle in the foot. Right knee over right ankle. Left side of the pelvis gently drawing forward, right thigh drawing back. Tailbone pulling down toward the earth, low ribs pulling in. Check in, do you wanna lengthen your stance at all? And then when we find our nice solid foundation, a little bit of a stretch happening in that left lower leg, bring our arms up. And then this sign, interlacing the fingers to the base of the skull, letting those elbows draw out, open the heart, open the throat, crown draws back. Starting to lift back to neutral, release both hands overhead for a moment. And side stretch, opposite side, right hand down. Right fingertips reach for the earth, left fingertips reach overhead. Starting to lift back to neutral, sweep the right hand up to meet the left, rotate the palms out, bring them to the hips, lean forward, deeply bend the right tippy toes on the left, find your standing, and again, just guide those hips in a few circles, one direction, switch directions. and finding stillness. And we'll find a little balancing stretch for the quads here. So if you have a chair handy or you're near a wall, option to use that as we move into this. If you have a strap at home, also an option to grab your strap and have your strap handy. So we will ground down through the sole of the left foot. We're gonna bring all our weight off of our right and first just check in to see how balance is feeling on that left side this morning. And again, option have a little bit of support in something here if you like. We're gonna lift the right heel up toward the right glute and we're gonna to try to zip the inner line of the thighs together so our knees are pretty close together. We're long but not locked in the left knee. If that right foot is in reach, either with a strap or a hand, we're gonna pull it all the way up until we can bring a hand or a strap onto the foot and then we'll draw that heel in even a little closer to the glute. And starting to slow, release your leg, your hand, your strap, whatever you got going on. Bring it all the way back down. Before we do the second side, just plant your right, pick up your left and give it a little shake. And then second side. So again, first take that moment just to kind of check in, find your balance. Let most of your weight lift from your left leg. Then start to lift that heel up toward the glute. Try to zip that inner line of the thigh together. Knees right next to each other. Check in this side with a hand or a strap. Maybe reach back, grab that foot. Pull it in a little closer to the glute. Slow release that leg all the way back down. Find support so you can lift your foundation leg, give it a little shake. And then we'll ground again through the left leg. Bring the right knee up to the belly. 
So again, feeling that support in the left side, we'll start to bring right knee in toward belly. If it feels like it's in reach, go ahead and grab onto the thigh or the knee with your hands or your straps. Squeeze it in a little closer to the belly. Oof, too much office remodeling going on for me. <laughs> And then we'll release that squeeze a little bit. We're gonna bring the right fingertips to the back of the right knee and open that leg out to the side. So left hand could come to the hip. It could float out to the side as a counterbalance. It could rest on your wall or your chair. We're gonna open that right leg out to the right side as far as it will go without twisting the pelvis, taking it with it. And we're gonna make sure we're really grounded down through the left foot, long in the back of the knee, long in the spine. And then slowly bringing that knee back in line with the hip. Slow lower it back down. And again, before we do the second side, just give your standing leg a nice little, nice little wiggle. Finding your foundation, right side. Left leg lifts. First, just bringing that bent knee in toward the belly, drawing the leg in as far as it will go, or hands or strap to thigh or shin. Bringing it in a little further. And if it's really squeezed in, let it go just a little bit. Left fingertips to the back of the left knee. Find that stretch for inner thigh, inner hip. Slowly bring in that knee back in line with the hip. Plant that foot, pick up the right, give it a nice little shake. From solid standing foundation, little bend into the knees, bring the hands to the thighs, slow melt yourself all the way over. Find forward fold. We're gonna bring our fingertips or hands down to our mat or our block in front of the gaze. We'll deeply bend the left knee, lift the right heel, slide that right leg all the way back your mat to find a low lunge. So we let left knee align over the left ankle. We lower the right knee, untuck the toe. And then just check in. Your knee didn't land very far forward of your ankle like mine did, adjust as needed. Stepping hands up onto the front knee or if you like sweeping them, right up overhead. Take a moment to check in here, looking for a little bit of a stretch in the front of the right thigh and hip. So if you want, sink those hips a little closer to your floor. And again, as needed, left foot scoots closer to the top of your mat. If you transition hands to knees, I'll go ahead and send the arms up overhead. Fingertips reaching high. And then we'll take a little twist here. So twist the heart open to the left, float your right hand to the outside of your left thigh. Left hand can just float down and rest behind you. Or if you like, bend the elbow, rest it all the way across the low back, right fingertips, <laughs> left fingertips reaching for the front of your right hip. Starting a slow unwind back toward the front. We're gonna bring both hands overhead for a moment. And then we'll bring hands down toward the floor and we're gonna bring both hands inside our left foot. So bring that left hand inside the left foot, tuck the right toe, lift the knee. We're moving toward wide leg forward fold. So tuck the right toe, lift the knee, hands start to walk toward the center of your mat. Right heel comes down, left toes turn to the front of your mat, hands find center. We're gonna check in, make sure our toes are equidistant from the long edge of our mat. Little bend into the knees, release the spine, crown drawing down toward your floor, hands resting wherever is comfortable. If you like, they can pull through the legs toward the space behind you. And 
and then lift up about halfway, find a slightly more active spine. Walk hands toward your left foot, trying to keep your hips fairly square to the earth. So if that left hip tries to pop up a lot higher than the right, we're gonna try to pull them back to center. We're gonna bring our right hand as close to the left foot or ankle as it will come. If it's in reach, you can scoop the hand to the outer edge of the foot or ankle. We'll twist the heart open to the left, slide your left hand to your hip or send it overhead. Slow, unwind, slide, or float that left hand down. Release the right, bring the hands to the center, and again, fully release into the spine. Arms are dangling, reaching behind you, crown drawing down toward the earth. Lift up, halfway, neutral spine. Hands walk to the right. Bringing that left hand as close to the right foot as it will get or scoop to the outer edge of the foot or ankle. Try to bring that pelvis to the center of the mat. Twist the heart open to the right. Right hand to the hip or overhead. Slow release. Release the hands, release the spine, dangle the head. And walking hands back toward the left, transitioning back to our low lunge. We walk hands to the left, we rotate those left toes toward the top of our mat, lift the right heel, bring that left hand back outside the foot, lower the knee, Untuck the toe. Being up on the very, very tips of your fingers, or if you have a block or blocks, you can bring block with you, or you can bring hands to thighs. We'll find two different versions of half monkey. So first thinking about having a long spine as much as possible, keeping the left sole of the foot glued down. Lift the hips, pull the hips back toward your right heel, straighten the knee. Crown is drawing away from tail. We're fairly lifted and open here. So again, you could do this Hands to thigh, hands on blocks. Taking a nice deep inhale, and then with an exhale, allowing yourself to pull back around the spine, lift the left toes. Maybe hands come down a little, from block to floor or knee to block. Maybe you come down onto your palms, crown, drawing down toward the ankle, nose drawing down toward the knee. Beginning a slow walk forward. Low lunge. Up onto the very tips of the fingers or hands on blocks. Tuck the right toe, lift the knee, slide that leg forward, find forward fold. Dangling down over the thighs, arms hanging, fingertips to opposite elbows, whatever feels good, take a moment, move. and finding stillness, planting fingertips or palms, ground through the sole of the right foot, left leg all the way back, find your low lunge. So again, as you, as you move into it, take a moment, really find the shape in your lower body, find as much or as little stretch for the front of the right hip as you would like. And then as you're ready, if you're not there already, we'll bring those hands up overhead. Mm -hmm. 
And twisting the heart open to the right, we're gonna float that left hand across center line, come to the outer knee or thigh. We're gonna float the right hand down and just let it rest behind the glute or the low back. Or if you like, finding a bind, bending the elbow, back of the hand slides across the low back and the fingertips actually reach toward the front of the left hip. Slow unwind, back toward the front. Lifting both hands for a moment. And then we'll bring the hands down. Hands will come inside that right foot. Tuck the left toe, lift the knee. Walk hands toward the center of the mat. Right heel down, <laughs> left heel down, right toes forward. Find your wide leg, forward fold. Level out the feet so toes are equidistant from the long edge of your mat. Release the spine, let the arms hang or reach behind you, crown of the head drawing down. And then lift yourself up halfway. Find some support in fingertips or palms or bring a block with you. And we'll find side lunge. So deeply bending that right knee, sink your hips down toward the right side of your mat, keeping the outer edge of your left foot firmly planted. Pressing into that right foot, straighten the knee, lift, hands walk through center, left, sinking, deeply bending, left knee, outer edge of the right foot stays planted. Slow lift, hands walk through center, release the spine, dangle. And transitioning back to low lunge, walking hands to the right, turning those right toes, lifting left heel, squaring hips to the front, lower the knee, untuck the toe. Firmly plant that right foot, come long to the tips of the fingers or grab block with right foot flat and spine neutral. Hips rock back toward left heel. And let yourself drop back a little further. Lift the toes, soften the spine, melting head toward knee. Starting a slow walk forward, stopping about halfway between half split and low lunge. Coming up onto very tips of the fingers or using a block, we're gonna slide the right leg back and find a high kneel. So we'll bring the knees to meet one another, lift the torso up over the knees, and we'll tuck the toes, lift the heels. Slide the hands around to the low, low back, tops of the glutes. Press the hips forward, 
Elbows draw back, heart opens, throat opens, crown falls back. And see if you can find a stretch from the knees all the way to the throat. Slow lifting back to neutral. Untuck the toes, slide the hands around to the fronts of the thighs. We're gonna slide or walk over to a child's pose here. So if it works for you, you can sink your hips to your heels. If it doesn't, you can keep them a little more elevated as you slide or walk your hands down, bring your hands out. So child's pose or keeping the hips a little more lifted, puppy pose. Take a moment here, really soften through spine, shoulders. Starting to lift your way up toward tabletop. If you widen the knees for your child's pose, we'll bring those knees back in line with the hips, hands right under the shoulders, nice wide finger pads, really grounded down through your palms and your left shin. We'll slide the right leg back, lift the knee, keep the toes gently resting down onto your mat, and then slide your right toes in toward your body. Press your right toes down into your mat, press into your hands, press your body weight back toward that extended right leg. And releasing that, leg soft, shoulders right over the wrists, slide that right leg out to your right side. Point the toes toward the top of your mat. Again, press into your hands, lower your hips back toward your left heel with left ankle, knee, and hip staying in the same plane. So rather than softening over to one side or the other, sinking straight back, right sole of the foot stays down. Starting to slow lift back up if you're not there already so your shoulders land back over your wrists. Walking the hands in toward the standing knee. We're gonna come up into a knee, <laughs> kneel here. So grab some squishy support for your left knee as needed. Bringing the torso up over the hips and then checking that that right ankle is pretty much in the same plane with the left knee. And then we'll bring the right hand, palm face up on the right thigh, send your left fingertips high. Palm facing to the right, reach long through the arm and the crown, and then slide that right hand down toward your right foot, lengthening left side body. Starting a slow lift, back toward neutral. Bring the left hand to the hip. We're gonna slide our heel toe, the right foot in. So we find about a 90 degree bend in the knee and we turn the toes out to point toward the side of our space. We'll bring the right hand just to the inner part of the lower thigh. And we're gonna gently press that hand into the thigh, lengthen through the crown and then twist to the left. Take a couple breaths here. Each inhale, imagine pulling your crown a little longer from your tail. Each exhale, reaching a little further into that twist. Slow unwind, back toward the front. Bring that right knee back down to meet your left. Tuck the toes, 
lift the heels, slide the hands around to the tops of the glutes. Press the hips forward, open through the heart. If camel is in your practice and you're feeling up for it this morning, maybe release the right hand, bring the fingertips to the heel. Flow back feels okay. Maybe release left hand, fingertips to left heel. Gently pressing fingers into heels, opening the heart neck stays active. your hands to heels variation, slow release one arm all the way around to the front. Use the weight of that arm to start to lift forward. And then we'll all untuck the toes, bring the hands to the thighs, slow melt over, child's pose or puppy pose, melting heart. to tabletop, aligning your hands, aligning your knees, left toes, slide back, knee lifts, toes slide in, press down into your mat, press into your hands, press back. Relax that, slide leg all the way out to the left side, toes pointed toward the front of your mat, press into your hands, rocking straight back, right ankle, knee, hip, stay in the same plane. Aligning shoulders over wrists, walking hands in towards standing knee. As you lift up, again, just check in to make sure that left ankle is pretty much in the same plane as your right knee. Coming all the way up, left hand to the thigh, right hand reaches, find some length and side bend. Lifting, right hand to hip. We're gonna slide or heel toe that left foot in. Turn your toes out, about a 90 degree bend to the knee. Hand slides, inner part of lower thigh, lower part of inner thigh, there we go. Gently pressing that hand in, lengthen through your crown, twist opposite. Take a few breaths here. Each inhale you grow taller. Each exhale, if you feel like there's space, maybe you find a little more twist. Starting a slow unwind back toward the front and we'll slide that left knee in to meet the right. This time hands to thighs, hips to heels, slow melt yourself right over to a child's pose or make it a wide knee child's pose or a puppy pose or a melting heart.
And then wherever you landed, imagine taking a little bit of a side stretch in one direction, walking your hands over toward one side, maybe crossing the wrists. And to the second side. And walking hands back to center. We'll lift up through kneeling and come around to a seat. So letting your hips come over to one side, heels come opposite direction. We'll root down through the sits bones, send both legs long in front of us for a moment. As much as you can here, lifting toward your neutral spine option, grab a little props to elevate the hips if that feels better. We're gonna keep the left heel reaching long. So imagine that heel gently drawing away from you, left toes gently pulling in. We're gonna slide the right heel in toward the right glute. The left hand will come across center line and across to the outer edge of the right foot, thumb pointing down. We're gonna scoop that hand to the outer edge of the foot, press the right foot into the left hand, start to lift the heel. As much as is comfortable, we're gonna press that heel away from you, maybe even coming to fully long in the back of the knee. Twisting the belly toward or into that right thigh. Tent your right fingertips, press them into the earth behind your right hip to help you find a little more long neutral spine. Or you could find a bind, bending that elbow, resting the hand to the low back. Crown growing long, twisting to the right. Slow twist, back towards center. Start to release that heel, back down toward the floor. Unwind the hand, send both legs long for a moment. Just take a little shake to the legs or point flex to the ankles or press into the earth to lift your hips. And both legs long, crown long. Right leg stays long, left heel slides in. Right hand across center to the outer edge of the foot, thumb pointing down. Scooping right hand, outer edge of left foot. Heel presses into, not heel, foot presses into hand. Lift the heel, press that leg away. Maybe coming all the way to long in the back of the knee. Twisting open to the left, tenting those fingertips, pressing into the earth, find more length or find a bind. Crown growing long, twisting open to the left. Slow twist toward the front. Release the heel back down. Release the hand, press the leg long. Take a little wiggle point flex movement. And then pulling the heels in, soles of the feet meet, knees reaching out to the side, finding your seated bound angle. And we'll take a forward fold here, but make it whatever version of a forward fold feels really good to you right now. So you could stay long and neutral through the spine and you could bring your heart directly forward toward your heels. You could round over into a fold here, softening your head down toward your feet. You could add in a little bit of a side bend. You could add in a little bit of a twist. If you're in a side bend or a twist, go ahead and move to your second side. If you're not there already, coming back to center, taking a few breaths, 
Heart drawing directly toward the feet or head melting down. And then take a moment here to just check in with yourself, check in with your body. Is there anything that we did not stretch today that would feel really good to stretch to bring your practice to a close? We'll start to lift back to a long spine. Take a moment to pause here in seated, find a stretch, come back to a hands and knees, pop up to standing, come down onto your back, whatever you need, whatever you like. Taking a moment, honor whatever that may be. And once you get your wiggles out, you've got your last movement or stretch completed, starting to find your way down to the ground on your back. Finding your way to a knees to chest pose, flat on your back, knees drawing gently in toward the belly, bringing your hands to your knees, taking the hands, guiding the knees in a few circles, one direction, and switching directions. Allowing the soles of the feet to come down onto your mat. Resting in a half corpse pose here if you like, keeping a bend in the knees or grabbing a prop to support your knees or bringing the feet out a little wide, letting the knees rest toward one another. Or soles of the feet meet, knees falling out wide to the side or Shavasana corpse pose, legs long arms long, everything a little wide, whatever shape you're choosing, allowing all your soft tissues, your joints, your bones to just completely let go. No holding in any part of the body. We let everything soften, rest down toward the support of the earth. Letting your breath go completely, no breath control, just an easy, natural breathing rhythm. Letting your thoughts go, maybe using the sense of your breath as a focal point, maybe feeling the connection of your tissues on your mat or your props as a focal point. And as those thoughts come up, just gently letting them go, bringing yourself back to whatever your point of focus may be. Beginning to gently draw, lift, bring bent knees back in to the belly. Let your knees fall a little wide and the soles of the feet meet in the air. Bring the hands together at heart center. Rub the soles of the feet and the hands together, building a little warmth.
Bringing bent knees back into the belly, hands to the knees. Either let these legs draw over to one side, taking you to the fetal position, or if you like, cross the ankles, start to roll the length of the spine, shoulder blade to tail. Eventually slow press or rock yourself up. Settling into an easy seat for a moment, props if you like. And one last time here, feeling your foundation, feeling your connection at your hips, sits bones, pelvis, feeling that gently long spine, soft shoulders, softening through the gaze or closing the eyes and scanning through your body, just noticing without judgment what comes up for you at the end of your practice. And then maybe taking a moment to think about the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and if you would like to set an intention for your day, for your week, a word, an idea, maybe just an image, the intention you would like to set as you move into the rest of your day. And if you'd like, blinking eyes fully open, hands to heart center. Thank you for taking time out of your day to practice with me and share this movement with me. I appreciate all of you so very much. <clears throat>